Welcome back to the comments section. I'm Britt Cooper. A fighter in the UFC by the name of Sean Strickland has been making waves online, but not necessarily for his fighting. He is going viral and he is trending because he is becoming a woke journalist's worst nightmare, and we love to see it. Before we talk about this, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you've not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section upload. Sean Strickland has been an MMA fighter since 2008, and he is currently the UFC's middleweight champion. And like many other outspoken, problematic UFC fighters, he has been known to say some controversial things. Controversial, according to the mainstream media. He is in a big fight that is happening tomorrow. We're filming this on Friday, so Saturday at 9 p.m. Central Time, and you're gonna wanna watch it after you watch this episode and you hear what he has to say. So because he has this fight tomorrow, he's doing all the normal press, he has his weigh-ins. It all started when a Canadian journalist took the mic to ask Sean some questions. And right off the bat, this is what Sean does. Just watch. Sean uh, Neil Davidson from the Canadian Press. Welcome mm. to Canada. Oh, congratulations! Yeah, <laughs> the Canadian Press, man. Were you a uh, were you a, uh, a COVID bank account stealer too? Were you on board with that, guys? Ten seconds in, all this guy says is, "Hey, I'm the Canadian Press. I'm gonna ask you some questions." And he's like, "Oh." <laughs> All right, here we go again. And if you're wondering what he means by the bank account freezing during the trucker convoy, the big trucker protests against the vaccine mandates in Canada, Justin Trudeau and his government froze bank accounts. The people protesting seized some of their accounts, shut down fundraisers for the truckers. They did everything in their power to stop these people from peacefully protesting. So that is what Sean is referencing. Are you left wing or right wing? Were you a tr were you a Trudeau? We got one of the we got one of the fucking commies. With the press, we got to know where this man stands. Were you non-biased? I think I'll ask the questions here. Oh, he thinks he'll ask. Oh, we know. Maybe I should just pass on this month. He's gonna go back. He's gonna go back and give my bank account information of Trudeau. <laughs> well, it's probably a good bank account. Uh, boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. That's such a weird thing. Well, it's probably a good bank account. A good bank account to freeze. Does Trudeau want to take Sean Strickland's money, just like he took the trucker's money? Anyway, so like I said at the beginning, Sean Strickland is very outspoken. He does not mince words at all. If you've seen any of his other press conferences, you would know this. So this is nothing out of the ordinary, really, for him. And some people in the comments have been complaining that him starting off this interaction like that was harsh, but these journalists are ruthless. And right off the bat, you have to figure out where they stand and what their biases are, because newsflash, there are barely any non-biased reporters anymore. Like, those don't exist in the mainstream media. Somebody commented and said, these are not journalists, these are activists masquerading as journalists, precisely. After Sean said all of that, after they had their first little spat, the reporter composed himself, and his first question out of the gate was a gotcha question to Sean about the gay community and some comments that he made a while ago about the LGBTQ community. And Sean lit into him, and it was beautiful to watch. I did want to ask you about something you wrote a couple of years ago. You said, if I had a gay son, I would think I... Oh, look, another, another, this I'm saying to you, the swamp, you guys, the swamp. You're part of the <laughs> problem. You elected Justin Trudeau. Like, the fact that you have no <sighs> backbone, and, and has he shut down your country and seize bank accounts, you ask me some stupid shit like that, go f*** yourself. Move the f*** on. <laughs> Doesn't really answer the question. Yeah, well, it was a dumb question to ask in the first place. It was a question completely out of left field. No wonder he didn't want to answer it. He wrote something years ago about how he would feel if he had a gay son. That's his business. Why are you here asking him about it? You're at a UFC fight asking a fighter about comments he made about the LGBTQ community. Get a grip. Now again, some people in the comments were arguing that his response was arrogant and a bit unwarranted. But that question, like I said, was bullshit. It was not asked in good faith. It had nothing to do with the fight. Somebody commented and said, it's a UFC fight. Why is he asking that question? He got what he deserved. That journalist is asking that question so he can go back to his office and write up that, yup, confirmed, Sean Strickland is homophobic and the UFC is problematic. We knew it. We shouldn't have let him into Canada. We shouldn't let them be fighting in Canada because of all the things that they're saying about gay people. That is exactly why he is there asking that specific question. He knows the article that he wants to write. But now, this journalist has to deal with the fact that over 50 million people on Twitter alone have watched him be called out on his weak interview and his weak masculinity. Well, sir, he's Canadian. And I personally really enjoy that. Kyle Becker commented and said, stop being nice to liars and hacks who are trying to destroy your country. They are intellectually dishonest and have no respect for the people. They don't deserve your respect. This isn't hard. Another person said, every politician, celebrity, and normal person needs to take note. This is how you talk to the mainstream media and anyone who doesn't care about you. Strickland really spit some fire right there. He completely did. I will not say that that was the most articulate answer, the most philosophical answer about that issue, but it was fiery. And he let that reporter know that he was not 
not effing around, that he was not interested in even touching that question because it was so ridiculous and unwarranted. Now, you might think we're finished and that that F you was the end of this interaction, but that journo wanted more. So we're gonna give you more. I didn't hear no bell. After being told to go F himself, he jumped right back in with this next question. Also, things you said about the trans community, you said uh, this past October when they announced the Bud Light sponsorship that you'd go so hard on Bud Light in your next fight, they'll have to accept me or denounce me when uh, when they know what and they'll, we'll know what they stand for. Are you this guy's like, hey, this Canadian's not that Canadian. Are you still going to use your fight time to kind of speak on that? Here's the thing about Bud Light. People like you have weaseled your way in the world. You are, you are an infection. You are the definition of weakness. Everything that is wrong with the world is because of you. And you know what? He's not wrong because the people behind these agendas who are pushing them every single day on every media outlet, everything that we read and consume, it's him. He's not wrong. It is an infection. The world is not saying, you know what? You're right. Chicks have dicks. The world's not saying that. The world's saying, no, there are two genders. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, who they could f in school. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, their sexual preference. You want to look at the fucking enemy to our world? It's that mother right there. I mean, I don't think anybody could have said it better. Journalists need to be brought down a peg and Sean Strickland just did it. You wanted to talk to him about trans issues. You wanted his opinion on your progressive trans ideology and you got it. You got it right in your dumb, dumb face. There is no rational reason to be asking this to a UFC fighter at a UFC press conference. You just wanted to come here and stir the pot and create a controversy and make your story because framing somebody as bigoted, homophobic, problematic, whatever, gets clicks and makes your outlet money. That's why you showed up to that press conference. It lacks journalistic integrity. Those questions were low hanging fruit. They were not asked in good faith and you got what you deserved. Fool this man! No! Colin Ruge, who posted a lot of these clips on X, replied to one of them with this, and he said, Strickland is clearly taking notes, and it's a photo of Elon Musk, and this was literally my first thought. I was immediately comparing them. And if you don't know what this is, you just have to watch this clip. It's Elon talking to Bob Iger after Disney pulled all their advertisements from X. Just watch. If somebody's gonna try to blackmail me with advertising, blackmail me with money, go f yourself. Go yourself. <laughs> is that clear? I, I hope it is. Hey, Bob. And we did a whole episode about that interaction and about Elon versus Disney. And like I said in that episode, this is the energy that we should be bringing. You just have to shut them down. And sometimes it's as simple as saying, go F yourself. We are not being diplomatic doormats anymore. Those days are over. Back to the story. Obviously, this interaction went viral and across X, it has millions upon millions of views and impressions. Sean seems very proud of it. He's posting different clips from it saying, you're not a man, you're weak, whatever, it's epic. But of course, the mainstream media has gotten their panties in a knot about it, which is always fun to see. CBS said Sean Strickland's homophobic tirade is the latest in UFC's ugly, uninhibited dive into the culture wars. But funnily enough, even though Sean and this interaction is in the title of this article, the writer delicately avoided talking about Strickland much at all, a bit scared maybe. He just wanted to talk about something that Dana White said like five years ago. That was really what this article discussed. And then USA Today reached out to ESPN to get a comment about Strickland and asked if they would denounce his behavior. And then rightfully, ESPN directed the reporter to UFC because Strickland is a UFC employee for a response. And this journo was very upset about that. He wrote this piece, UFC's Sean Strickland made a vile anti-LGBTQ attack. ESPN's response is disgracefully weak. And then he wrote, I don't expect the UFC to do the right thing. But doesn't ESPN have a higher standard because they're cucked libs? That's the higher standard. Didn't you guys just hear that they literally lied and cheated in order to win Emmys for some of their employees? They do not have a higher standard, my ass. Okay. Why is a media superpower so afraid to blast this type of hatred? And I understand it's not ESPN's duty to comment on every remark every athlete that appears on its air makes, but there are certain moments when that is indeed required, and this is one of them. ESPN is partners with the UFC, and the fight this weekend isn't just some small event. It's a huge deal. Deal. Yes, ESPN partners with UFC. Yes, you can watch some UFC on ESPN, but it's not their company. Sean Strickland is not their employee. Why would you even ask them about his comments? You're just begging, oh, please denounce him, please. Would you please? And you're gonna write an entire article about it? Like, is the news this slow that that is the story that you're covering? Or are you too scared to go to UFC directly because you don't wanna get the same kind of tongue lashing that that Canadian reporter got? Maybe that's why. And to be fair, ESPN is probably avoiding commenting on it for the exact same reason. Like, they've seen Dana White mad and they don't wanna deal with it, rightfully so. You wouldn't like me when I'm angry. We have spent 
far too long dancing around these types of questions and tiptoeing around the media hits while we simultaneously desperately try to get the media establishment to like us or come over to our side. Like, they will never treat us fairly. Never. We know that by now. So it's time to change the strategy. I think the tides are finally turning and people are done. Good men like Sean Strickland and Dana White and Elon Musk and now Javier Malay in Argentina, you should see what he said to all of those elites at the World Economic Forum. They are leading the way and we have to follow that energy. Well guys, I hope you liked this episode. Make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and if you want even more content, you can follow me on Instagram, Snapchat, and TikTok. See you guys next time.